what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. In this video, I want to talk about what I refer to as the arpeggio pathway. So when you're soloing over chord progression, there's essentially two paths that you can take. Number one, you can take the scale path. Number two, you can take the arpeggio path. So a lot of beginning intermediate guitar players, like early intermediate players, they tend to plateau by over-focusing on the scale path. So you'll hear guitar players ask questions like, what is that guitar player doing to get that sound? What scales are they using? Or in this specific scenario, what scales should I use? Or what scales is that person using to get that specific sound? So they, they over-focus on scales. And the answer is not always going to be about scales. More often than not, the question that you should be asking yourself is, what is that guitar player doing over each specific chord to produce the sound that they're getting? So a lot of times the answer that you're looking for is not in scales, it's not in modes, it's usually in the underlying chords. So that's what the arpeggio pathway is all about. So the arpeggio pathway is the other side. That's where you focus exclusively on the chords that you're soloing over. But just like you can overdo it with the scale pathway, you can also overdo it with the arpeggio pathway too. You can over arpeggiate stuff, and that may not sound too good either. So ultimately, you want to get a nice mix. You want to get a nice mix of the scale and the underlying arpeggios, kind of mix it all together, and that's usually what the pro guitar players are doing to produce the sound that you're after. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on the arpeggio pathway, and then we're also going to kind of focus on putting it all together. So let's get started. So what is an arpeggio? So an arpeggio is just the notes of a chord that you're soloing over. So if you are soloing over chord progression and you come across a C major chord, well, you look at the notes of a C major chord, which is C, E, and G, and then you find all your C's, E's, and G's on the entire neck of the guitar, and that is your arpeggio pathway. So if you only focus on the notes C, E, and G, that's your arpeggio pathway for the C major chord. When the chord then switches to another chord, say it moves to an A minor chord, for example, uh, and you want to find the arpeggio pathway for an A minor chord, again, you look at the notes of that chord. The notes of an A minor chord are A, C, and E. So you find all your A's, all your C's, and all your E's up and down the entire neck of the guitar, and that is your arpeggio pathway for the A minor chord. So how do you find these pathways? How are you supposed to memorize all this stuff? That's the purpose of the cage system. So this video here is not about the cage system. I made a 45 minute super in-depth tutorial about the cage system, which I'll post a link to below. Definitely check that out first. So I know 45 minutes is kind of a long video. I know in this day and age, people kind of don't really want to watch stuff that's longer than 10 minutes, but I highly recommend you watch the entire 45 minute video. It's a very in-depth system, and I, I went in-depth, and I talk about the entire system as a whole in that 45-minute video. So if you haven't already seen that, check that out. Link to that video is below. But let's now look at these pathways for these chords. So what you see on the screen here is just the notes C, E, and G. So these are all the Cs, all the Es, and all the Gs on the entire neck of the guitar. The reason those are the notes we're focusing on is because we're looking at the C major arpeggio pathway. So if you're soloing over a C major chord, which consists of the notes C, E, and G, your arpeggio pathway for that specific chord is going to be the notes C, E, and G, all up and down the neck of the guitar. So just looking right here in the open position, you have the notes C, E, and G, which form your C major chord, your open C major chord like this. So you have C, E, G, C, and then E. So that's a C major chord. That's also an arpeggio pathway. So if I just played the individual notes, I'm playing a C major arpeggio. So that's a C major arpeggio. So using the cage system, you could say that this C major chord is in the C shape. So the way that the cage system works is that whenever you have a specific chord in a specific shape, either the C shape, A shape, G shape, E shape, or D shape, you can always find the next chord in line if you know how to spell the word caged. So I know that this is my C shape, so my next available shape for the C major chord, or for my C major arpeggio pathway, whichever you want to call it, is going to be found in the A shape. So here's a C major chord in the A shape. All right, so that's another arpeggio pathway. 
And then moving up, you have your G shape because C, A, G. G is the next in line. So C shape, A shape, G shape. And then you have an E shape. And then you have a D shape. And then you have a C shape. And it just keeps going up in that order. So C, A, G, E, D. It always is going to spell the word caged. So that's the arpeggio pathway layout over the entire neck of the guitar for a C major chord. So I made up a, uh, a C major arpeggio run played over a C major chord using just this pathway. So check that out now. So that specific run, I was just using eighth notes. So if the beat was one, two, three, four, I was playing at the speed one and two and three and four and one and two and. So when you're making up your arpeggio runs, you know, you can use eighth notes like I did. You can use 16th notes, go one and a two and a three and a four and if you want to have like faster arpeggio runs. You can use triplets like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, and then if you want to get really crazy, you can do sextuplets. So you have to fit six subdivisions in for each beat. So I just used eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and. So my specific arpeggio pathway run over the C major chord was this. And you know, I could see I was just playing around with these shapes. I started out with the shape. I moved up to the shape. I moved up to the shape. I ended on this note. All C's, E's, and G's. All right, so let's look at an arpeggio pathway for another major chord. So we just looked at a C major chord arpeggio pathway. Let's look at an F major chord arpeggio pathway. So the notes of an F major chord are F, A, and C. So I have to find all my F's, A's, and C's on the entire neck of the guitar. So let's do that. All right, so here's all your F's, A's, and C's. So down here, the... Um, F major chord that you're probably familiar with is this uh, first fret bar chord. A lot of beginner players hate this chord because you have to push down pretty hard with your first finger, but that's still an F major chord nonetheless, consisting of the notes F, A, and C. So that's an arpeggio pathway right there. All right, so if that is an F major chord, that is in the E shape. That's called the E shape right there. So if you know that that's the E shape, What's your next shape in line? So it always spells the word caged. So C A G E D. So if this is the E shape, my next available F major chord shape is going to be in the D shape. So here's an F major chord in the D shape. And then the next one in line is going to be what? So E shape, D shape, C shape. So here's your next F major shape. And then C, A, so here's an A shape. And then if that's an A shape, your next one is a G shape, so here's a G shape. And then back up here at the beginning, you're back at your E shape again. So it's the same thing, the same shapes, everything's just kind of shifted. All right, so your lowest available shape for the F major chord is the E shape, whereas for the previous chord, your lowest available shape was the C shape. So, but once you find your lowest available shape, as long as you know how to spell the word caged, you can find all the subsequent shapes. So that's the F major chord. So again, my arpeggio runs, I was just doing the same rhythm that I did for the C major chord. I was just doing eighth notes. I was going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and just sticking to the notes of the F major arpeggio pathway. So that specific run was. All right, so that was my arpeggio run for the F major chord. Let's look at one more major chord and then we'll move to a minor chord. So now we're going to look at the pathway for a G major chord. So a G major chord consists of the notes G, B, and D. So find all your G's, B's, and D's on the entire neck of the guitar. So here they are. So the lowest available possible chord shape for a G major chord, 
it's going to be like this. This is a G major chord in the G shape. So this has your notes G, B, and D in it. And if you know where your G shape is, then the next available shape is going to be the E shape because caged, C, A, G, E. E is the next letter. So if this is your G major chord in the G shape, this is going to be your G major chord in the E shape. And then this is going to be your G major chord in the D shape. And then this is going to be your G major chord in the C shape. And then here's your G major chord in the A shape. And then here's your G major chord in the G shape again. So again, it spells caged. Alright, so again, keeping with the same rhythm, just using eighth notes, that one was... So that was the arpeggio run I did for the G major chord. So let's now look at a, at, at a minor chord. Alright, so next we're going to map out the arpeggio pathway for a minor chord. So the chord we're going to look at is an A minor chord. So this could potentially involve one more step. So the difference between a major chord and a minor chord is the third. So a major chord is root, third, fifth. A minor chord is root, minor, third, fifth otherwise known as root flat third fifth. So the only difference is that the third is lowered by one half step. So if you can map out your arpeggio pathway for a major chord, and then you want to figure out how to turn that into a minor chord pathway, you just have to know where your third is within each of the shapes. So we're trying to figure out what an A minor arpeggio pathway is, so we're going to start with an A major arpeggio pathway and then go from there. So an A major chord consists of the notes A, C sharp, and E. So let's find our A, C sharps, and E's on the neck. That's what you see here. So your lowest available chord shape for an A major chord is going to be right here. This is an A major chord in the A shape. That's an uh, A major chord in the, um, in the A shape. So C, A, G. So if an A shape, we know our next available shape is going to be G shape. So here's an A major chord in the G shape. And A, G, E. So here's an E shape. And then D shape. And then C shape. And then back at A shape. All right, so it always spells the word caged. So... The, um, the A major chord consists of the notes A, C sharp, and E. So root third, fifth. So the third is going to be C sharp. So if we want to turn this into an A minor chord, we have to take that C sharp and lower it by one half step, which results in a C. So A, C, and E are the notes of an A minor chord. So you can take this whole, uh, this whole arpeggio pathway and turn it into an A minor arpeggio pathway. So what you see here is all the A's, C's, and E's span up and down the entire neck of the guitar. So when I'm focusing on uh, minor chords, I kind of only really focus on three shapes. You can still focus on five shapes if you want. You can kind of focus on this. You can visualize this however you prefer to. But my preferred way is just to focus on three shapes. So here's one of the shapes. Here's another one of the shapes. Here's another one. And then back up here to repeat itself. So you can focus on other shapes in between those if you want. For a total of five, you can even come up with some other variations of these shapes. The important thing is just focus on the notes A, C, and E. Whatever it takes you to do that will keep you on your arpeggio pathway for the minor chord. <laughs> Alright, and that was that one. So, I started up here, and then I slid down to here with my first finger, and then I slid down here with my pinky, and that was my arpeggio run for the A minor chord. 
So now that I have an arpeggio pathway mapped out in my mind for the C major chord, F major, G major, and A minor chord, let me now put all this stuff together. I'm going to pay, play each one of those pathways over a chord progression. So check this out now. All right, so that was a little arpeggio solo that I came up with over those four chords. So, in my opinion, that was over arpeggiating things. Just as I said, you can overdo it with the scales and really not pay attention to the chords at all. Just think scale, 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 scales. And that kind of doesn't always produce a favorable sound. But you can also overdo it with the arpeggios. So that's kind of what I did there. But I did so because the purpose of this lesson is on the arpeggio pathway. Therefore, I'm overdoing the arpeggio pathway. So, you know, you kind of want to find a nice happy mix. So let's say that I don't want to focus exclusively on the arpeggios. Let's say I want to kind of do a little bit of scale stuff. So what do I do? I have to look at the chords. I have to figure out what the key is. So, you know, if you're if you're a fan of like rock music or music that you hear on the radio, a lot of times music is going to just be in a single key. So you look at the chords, you figure out what key they're in. How do you do that? Well, one of the easiest ways is just to use your circle of fifths. So I have a C major chord, uh, an A minor chord, an F major chord, and a G major chord. Looking at my circle of fifths, I can see that all of these chords fall right into this grouping of six right here. When all chords fall into a single grouping of six, you know that they're all part of the same key signature. So your key signature is designated right by the, uh, the chords that are in the center. So this is the key signature of C major. You could also say this is the key signature of A minor because C major and A minor are a relative major minor pair, meaning that both of those keys share the same chords as one another. The scales also share the same notes. So the C major scale shares the same notes as the A minor scale. So as I'm soloing over this chord progression, which is in the key of C major, A minor, if I just wanted to focus on scales, I could play the C major scale up and down the entire neck of the guitar, or the A minor scale up and down the neck of the guitar, same notes. And I could just do that the whole entire time. I could completely disregard the chords, and I can just noodle in my scale patterns, or I can shred as fast as I possibly can using just scale patterns, and it's all going to sound good because everything's in the same key. Or I can over-arpeggiate things like I just did right there. And that's going to sound pretty good, too, because I'm, I'm emphasizing specifically on the notes of each chord as each chord is occurring. But I kind of want to tastefully mix everything together. I want to kind of, a little bit of a scale pattern, kind of focus on the arpeggio, throw in some extra scale notes. So this is kind of where the art comes in. This is where it really helps to analyze other people's solos and things like that. Because that's what the pros do. The pros, they mix the scales and they mix the arpeggios together to make these nice solos. So... I just came up with a quick little uh, mixture solo here. Check it out real quick, and uh, that's going to kind of wrap it up for this lesson. And that's the uh, solo that I came up with, and that is kind of a mixture of the scales and the arpeggios. So um, what do I want you to take from this lesson? I just want you to take that there is two pathways you can practice. If you want to practice soloing over this per chord progression, this exact chord progression, and you just want to focus on your scales, C major scale, A minor scale, play your different patterns. I'll post a link to um, my uh, diatonic scale patterns lesson below as well. If you want to take the three patterns approach or the five patterns approach or seven patterns approach to the scale. So that's the scale path. 
Or if you want to practice arpeggiating each chord, that's the arpeggio path. Practice that. Practice both. They're both perfectly legitimate paths. And then after you get good at both of them, practice combining them together. All right. So just understand that there's two different pathways that you could take. Of course, there's more pathways than that too, but I don't want to get too crazy in just one video. But a scale path, arpeggio path, boom, done. See you next time. Mm -hmm.